Welcome to The Big Picture. I'm Phil Arno. This uh, coronavirus situation has put a stop or a monkey wrench into most of our lives and no matter what line of work you're in, we have had to change the way we do things. If you go out to dinner every once in a while with your family just to get a bite to eat, you can't do that anymore. Restaurants have closed down. If you're lucky, your favorite restaurant is doing takeout. Not all restaurants can afford to do that. It is a real hardship. We're talking about um, people who have lost their jobs. Minimum wage workers who used to work at restaurants are now sitting at home collecting benefits. Uh, farmers and, and meat packing plants. Everything has come to a new reality. With me on this big picture is somebody who's very familiar with the food industry in Western New York, and he's actually responsible for one of the biggest events that happens in Western New York every year. And I want to welcome to the show Drew Serza, who is known as the Wing King, organizer of Buffalo's most popular Labor Day celebration in Wingfest. Drew, welcome to the show. Under hey, un thanks, un un uncertain <laughs> conditions, we certainly have a lot to talk about. I never thought we'd be talking like this, Phil, but uh, you know, we, we, we adjust and we adapt and we make, the, make lemonade out of lemons, right? You know, we were talking a little bit before the show about how, you know, attitude is everything. And there's so much doom and gloom out there when you're watching news conferences and, and, and you know, you're, you're listening to numbers. And I, and I said it's almost like a sports score from hell. I mean, you look at <laughs> all these numbers, it's, it, it's very depressing. But if you can change directions and look at everything that's going on as an opportunity and something that's going to lead to positive things, that kind of puts a different spin on it. And you can kind of maybe lift yourself out of the down mood and maybe plan stuff, things that are going to be better. I agree, Phil. I, there's two ways of looking at this thing. Um, you can keep your head down and hope for the, or you can take it as a positive. Um, you know, life was really fast. We were all caught up in, in speed and getting things done, multitasking, juggling. Um, complaining that we don't have that um, family balance, that lifestyle balance. Well, now we have the time. We take a step back. I think it's a great time to take inventory of your personal life and your professional life. Look at where you are personally. Are you happy? Do you want to pivot and change directions? Professionally, if you have a job or you've got laid off, where do you want to be? Where are the opportunities going to be? If you're a business owner, you know, is my business model going to work going forward? What's going to change? And does my model fit into that? Do I need to pivot and adjust my model, make changes? I think that this is the opportunity to do those sort of things. And, and if you could take away the, the fear of the unknown, and the way you do that, I guess, is you basically think it out and you say, what's the worst that can happen? You take the worst case scenario and you fe feel how you can deal with that. And if you can take away the worst case scenario, the fear kind of dissipates. And then after that, it kind of, it's not so bad. You know, I, I can't remember. It wasn't long ago that term new normal came about. I can't remember what happened to create that term new normal, but we are dealing with the new normal. It's people like normal. They like their lives the way they are. Well, it's not gonna be like that. And if you go back to 2001, with the 9-11 tragedy. That was a tragedy that instilled fear in people. We were afraid for our lives. We were afraid to fly, to go into large crowds. And then there was a little bit of an economic impact from that. Then in 2008, we had the mortgage crisis, okay? And the stock market crashed. It was awful. People got laid off. And it was probably a three or four year fix. And then we boom, but that was totally economic. This one here is 9-11, and 2008 combined in one. Our economy, right now the economy look is not as bad. The pain is ahead of us. Um, so economically it's gonna be rough, but psychologically people are, until there's a, um, a vaccine, people are gonna be afraid. So now you've just combined 9-11 with 2008. That's not a good combination. That's an ugly formula. Well, you know, in thinking ahead, um, your particular expertise and your event Wingfest 
happens at Labor Day. Last year there were over 60,000 people that came. It's one of the biggest events in western New York and people come from all around the country to attend that, uh, that event. Uh, because of the nature of it, this, that's a prime event to, to be affected by this. So with the unknown as to how long our current circumstances are going to last, how do you plan for that? How do you deal with moving forward in this, this situation? It's got to be very difficult for you to, to figure anything out. Well, one thing I've built over the years, it's going to be 19 years, is great relationships with the restaurants, the sponsors, the vendors, and everybody. So we're all in this together. On a daily basis, I communicate with them um, just to see how they're doing. Uh, that's, that's my major concern is make sure their families are healthy, they're healthy, their businesses are okay. Um, if the festival happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. In this world, you've got wants and needs. And I think for the next bunch of years, it's going to be about needs. It's going to be Darwinism. Would it be great to have all these festivals and events? Yeah. Is there a need? No. Is there a want? Yes. I think the decisions for all of us with the events are going to be made by the governor and the county executive. Um, both those guys are really on top of things. And I think we feel comfortable with what they've done so far. So we will definitely take the direction from them. But even if I was given the go ahead, Phil, I have to look inside and think of my social responsibility. Do I want to bring people in from all over the country? Do I want to create a spike? I think there's event people, we're not going to be selfish. We're going to look at what's right for the community. But again, I think we're going to be dictated to. Well, you know, you, you talk about the new normal. In this country, every year, over 32 million people attend music festivals. And, oh. you know, and most of those people are, are under the age of 35 years old. Now, those people are typically not at risk for something like the coronavirus. So there's kind of a mixed situation yeah. there. Are they going to basically go back to the habits that they had and go resume music festivals and the social get-togethers that they had? Or are they going to go, as you say, into a new situation where they're not going to be so close anymore? They're going to be a little bit hesitant to be yeah. getting together. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a question going forward. Like, like after 9-11, you don't get on an yeah. airplane the same way now that you did before 9-11. It, it just, it's a different world. You, you know, Phil, it's, it's a great point. And just to play off of that, I think one thing we've learned about people is we've learned a lot about people on how they perceive this situation. Um, politics comes into the way people speak without a doubt. And you can almost see that. Um, whether somebody is on the reckless side or the conservative side or on the aggressive side, are they gonna take chances? Are they gonna go out to eat? Are they gonna go to concerts? I think we learn a lot about people and everybody's different. Um, the thing that really worries me is they talk about the reoccurrence, that we could have another reoccurrence and said, well, first of all, it's not going away. We could have another huge spike in September and it's not gonna go away until the vaccine. I think concert, I mean, look at Live Nation. Um, look at all the concerts that they've canceled. Look at all the jobs through Live Nation, through all the venues. Well, first, the bands are gonna to cancel too. If you look at all these retro bands, you know, the older bands, they're not gonna to wanna to go on the road. I mean, the people involved, they have health issues too. And, you know, we talk about restaurants all the time, Phil. I mean, restaurants are gonna have a tough time. First of all, without a doubt, they're not going to be part of phase one in New York State. Uh, Governor Cuomo already said that. It'll be part of phase two, and it'll probably be a 25% situation. Well, you know, you just can't make enough money at a 25% capacity. The bars probably aren't going to be open because you can't social distance the right way. Will staff come back? Laid off people right now are making the, their, their money on the state unemployment with a bump of $600 from the Fed. They could be at home right now making $1,100 a month or a week until July 31st. Are they going to want to come back at 15, 20 an hour? Are they going to want to risk their health? You know, there's so many different factors that go in. You just asked and answered about 10 of the questions yes, that I had in mind. <laughs> yes, and that's really, you know, there's, there's so much that, that oh. has to be considered. If you're a restaurant owner and 
you, you're going through this now. There's so many things that you have to consider. Like some restaurants are closed down totally, and some are open for takeout. If you're a restaurant owner, how do you make that decision, Drew? There, there, it, it's, it's puzzling to me <clears throat> what goes into that decision. I, I know there's personnel considerations, there's the type of restaurant. I mean, I was at uh, Russell's Steaks, Chops and more uh, over the weekend and he was doing takeout for the first time and people loved it. He was, there was lines uh, to get those dinners and he was doing arguably more business than he would do on a normal Saturday. Yeah. So you wouldn't have thought that that was gonna be a takeout restaurant. I don't know what goes into those decisions. Well, here, here's one thing you got to know about restaurant tours. There's no business life, personal life. It's one. When you're a restaurant owner, you're, it's a lifestyle. Look at a guy like Russell. You know, look at what Nick Batillo's doing at Asteria 166, Asteria 166. It's, it's part of your soul. That's what you do. So you find a way. To be honest with you, you know why these restaurant tours are opening up? to keep some people on staff and to make sure that he keeps their lot they keep their livelihoods going that's the number one thing that i see because you got to remember your expenses you still got to pay your rent utilities your insurance your liquor license all that stuff stays in place you've got no alcohol sales you're maybe making 25 percent of what you normally would doing takeout but your expenses are still 75 percent. so you don't make money but it's, it's part of your soul and I think restaurants know they need to feed Western New York, and they're doing it as a community service as well. Believe me, it's not for the money because they're not making money. Do you think a lot of the restaurants or some of the restaurants are going to be permanent casualties in this situation? Unfortunately, yes. I, I'll bet you one thing is um, the restaurants have been getting hammered for the last bunch of years on their costs are going up. And there's only so much you can pass on to the consumer. It, and I think 25% of the restaurants were on the fringe anyways. Um, it's going to be rough. And, you know, if you think if you've got a restaurant downtown, besides those factors I mentioned that are working against you to open up, the one industry is who's going to get hammered worse than anything is a travel tourism business. You know, people are just not going to do leisure travel. We're doing a Zoom call right now for TV. Think of all the business meetings that people have. Business travel permanently will probably go down 50%. Now, what's that mean to downtown restaurants around the conventions and convention centers, and things like that? They lose all that business. There's no sporting events. They lose all that business. Um, there's just no concerts. Think about if you're a downtown restaurant, all that traffic. Because if you talk to restaurants down there, a lot of their clientele are from out of town because the Visit Buffalo Niagara folks have been doing such a great job marketing the area. Now, we're just not gonna have that for a while until again, we have a vaccine. So, I, I mean, I almost sound like Mr. Doom and Gloom, but you know, reality is what it is. So, <laughs> there just needs to be new business plans for everybody. Okay, uh, Drew, we're, we're out of time on this segment. Hold on, and uh, we'll be right back after this to talk more about restaurants, the food industry, Wingfest, and some ideas that you might have for when we get back to the new normal. We'll be back right after this.